Hey there, uh, this is Dewey Johnson, and what I thought I'd do, I was doing some other videos for people who are already balloon makers, but one of the things I've done in my career is trained literally hundreds of people how to make balloons professionally. Um, and so I thought I'd start with some basics, and uh, if you want to learn how to do balloons, this is a good place to start. Um, I thought I'd start real quickly though with, with why should you trust me, <laughs> right? Why, who am I, right? Um, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I started, uh, I was a trained clown, I, you know, I was making balloons, I was doing magic shows, parties, that kind of thing, and I started working in restaurants making balloons. So in about 1980, I started making about 1,500 balloons a week, five nights a week in a restaurant. Uh, in the early 80s, I got connected with a restaurant chain where I expanded to three restaurants here in San Diego, then I expanded to five restaurants in San Diego, and eventually I took it to uh, 14 different restaurants uh, in, I don't know, nine, ten different cities all across the country, uh, as far east as Virginia Beach, uh, as far north as Seattle, Chicago, uh, I had balloon sculptors everywhere, five nights a week in these restaurants. And uh, so I had to learn how to train people how to make balloons pretty fast. I wrote some books back in the uh, early 80s. Uh, I produced a videotape uh, in the late 80s. Um, and basically I worked, right? Lots and lots of work. But the main thing, true also, is that when you're training other people, uh, they don't have the same limitations you have. So I learned a lot from the people that I trained. Um, anyway, I kind of distilled it down, right? It's distilled down into what you need to know to learn as fast as possible. And that's the goal of this, is to teach you uh, how to learn balloons as, as fast as possible. So um, here we go. What I'm going to start with is not animals. I'm just going to start with techniques. We're going to learn some techniques and then I'll show you how that becomes animals. Okay. So start with a balloon. Doesn't really matter how long it is. Give it some length. I like to measure the ends to give me an idea of how long it is. So it's a little longer than four fingers left. All right. And all I'm going to do is a basic twist. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to show you how to hold this. I'm going to walk you through every step. And if you follow this, you're going to make faster balloons. Uh, if we stay in this particular order, you'll make faster balloons later. Okay? So in order to make a twist, all you have to do is push your fingertips together. Wherever you want the twist to happen, push your fingertips together. Um, so we'll start that, but I also forgot to say, always start at the end where the knot is. Because every time I twist, it pushes the air this way. And as long as there's room left, you're not going to pop the balloon. Okay? So I'm going to pinch my fingertips, and then with my other hand, I'm going to twist it around. Now I use my dominant hand uh, to do the pinching and twisting, because that's where I'm doing the measurement. My left hand, for me, your non-dominant hand, is your twister hand. That's your twister hand. Now notice how I'm holding both ends there, right, in one hand. If I let that go, it goes away because there's no friction to hold it there. Pinch, twist, all right? Now what I do is I move up in that non-dominant hand so that I'm holding that in my pinky. And I'm gonna pinch again. Okay, now that's still not going to hold because they're not locked together and there's no friction. Now, you would think, how am I going to keep reaching up, right? How am I going to go higher? After the first, after the second twist, I bend it back into my hand. And you'll see that I'm holding this in my hand and I can actually measure straight across with my finger to make sure that these two sections are the same size. And I always twist off the second section before I lock it. All right, so let me show you how that is in real time. Pinch once, move it up, pinch twice, bend it beside itself, pinch a third time. 
Now you notice I haven't taken this out of my hand. This has stayed in my dominant hand the whole time. Um, this is how it looks from my side. Notice how my thumb is across, right where the twitch, twist is. Now, if I take my other hand, turn it upside down, grab it, I can pull these apart, pull them apart while I twist them around. Okay, and what happens is now there's friction. There's friction between the edges of the balloons and that's how it holds together. That would be a basic dog head, but I'm not gonna worry about that. It's a lock tie, a basic lock tie. All right, so put that down because I'm always working towards that end. Pinch. We're gonna do two or three of these. Pinch. That's the second pinch. And then I bend it beside myself, beside itself. Pinch a third time. Pull them apart. Pull them apart. Twist them around. So why do I pull them apart? The reason I pull them apart is if I don't pull them apart, there's friction. There's a lot of friction. You can hear it in those balloons. When I pull it apart, now it's a, it's just a piece of stretched balloon. There's no friction in there. So that's how I keep it from popping. Pull it apart. Pull it apart. All right. I'm going to do it one more time. First pinch, twist, move my hand up, second pinch, twist, bend it beside itself, third pinch, twist. All right. Now, this is a basic dog, right? One, two, three, lock tie, lock tie, lock tie. Um, but again, let's not worry about the animal yet. All we're learning is the lock tie. So what I want you to do is make uh, 10 of those lock ties, two or three balloons, whatever it takes, make 10 of those lock ties, pause this tape and go to the next step. Okay, now we're gonna do a uh, bend tie, what I call a bend tie. Okay, now we're gonna do what I call a bend tie, all right? Same thing, inflate a, inflate a balloon. This time I left a little more than four fingers. I left like six, eight fingers. Um, but you know, you can do it. It doesn't really matter because we're not making anything yet. So the lock tie was two sections together with a third section to hold it, right? So that's the friction comes in here. A bend tie is only two twists, not three. So I'm gonna make the first twist. Now, instead of making the second twist, I'm gonna bend the balloon like that and reach across to make the second twist with a bend in it. Twist those off. That's a bend tie. Lock tie, bend tie. See the difference? Okay, now, the thing of it is, everything in balloons is about proportion. So I'm gonna make a bigger bend tie. I'm gonna make a twist, and I'm gonna come up here and bend it up here. And twist it off. Okay. That's a bigger bend tie, all right? If I wanted to make a balloon hat, whoops, hold on. If I wanted to make a balloon hat, now if I wanted to make a balloon hat, I make the first twist of the bend tie and then bend a big circle, big enough to fit around my head. Just like that. Okay? Same thing, just different sizes. Okay? Now, I always, if I do a big hat, if I do a hat, if there's room, I'll take that little ball and just wrap it through one more extra time to lock that off. Now, that's not going to come apart. 
So bend tie with just that little lock. I'll show you that a couple of times throughout this introduction. Now we're gonna do an ear tie. Okay, that's what I call an ear tie because it's the first place I learned it was on a teddy bear ear. Um, it's the same thing as a bend tie. If I make a first twist and I bend it, okay, basically what I've got is I've got two twists that I'm gonna bend together. Okay, now just like proportion makes a difference, right? Um, if I go small, like that, and I bend this in half, it's literally the same tie, but it's so small you get a lot of different qualities out of it. Now the way I do it is I anchor these two sections in one hand. I hold them in one hand with my fingers, making sure that these aren't going to move and then I'm gonna pull that one out. Once again, the key is to pull it away so there's less friction. I pull it out and twist it off. Pull it out and twist it, pull it out and twist it. And what you get is you get a little ear type tie. Now, by changing the positioning of that, I can get this kind of thing, which means you'll make a balloon change directions. So I can get an ear tie, Or another ear tie. I'm going to make another ear tie. That would be, so say I'm making a teddy bear or a mouse or a kitty cat or something, right? See, I can get two ears, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to make 10 bend ties, all different sizes, and then 10 ear ties. 10 ear ties. All right, just go straight down the balloon. Now this one I didn't blow up very far. I've made three or four twists and I still have a lot of room because these take a lot of space. These push it that way uh, a long way. Anchor, pull out, push around. So after you get multiple ear ties on here, I'm just gonna keep going to show you. So these ties are very powerful. They do a lot for us. Uh, by changing the position, I can maybe make a lightning bolt, right? I can make an inchworm. I can make a circle, right? If I change it so they're all going the same direction, now I've got a circle, right? Uh, I could make a star by changing directions. Right, like that, where it has a star. So there's a lot of things that can be done with these ear ties. Okay, so now do your practice. Do 10 bend ties, different sizes, and then do 10 ear ties. Okay, so the last technique that I'm going to teach you in this uh, basic starter session uh, is a way to make the balloon bend. See that uh, zigzag that I've got behind me? All right, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. All right. What the way it works is the latex gets stretched, gets excited. And if it gets stretched, it will expand further than, the, the, than what's not stretched. So if I bend this beside itself, it will bend a little bit, but it won't stay. So what I do is I don't make any twists or ties. All I'm gonna do is squish this together, squish some of the air out, twist it a little bit to loosen this side, to get this a little more stretched than the other side. So watch me do it. Squeeze the air out, twist it, and let it go. So this has now been stretched and you'll get a bend out of it. All right, so that's what I want you to do all the way down this balloon. Bend them close together, pinch and twist, just like that. You can just turn them and do exactly opposite of each other, 
and you'll get the zigzag like I've got back there. Or I could do sideways here. And now I can create really weird shapes that go really weird directions, right? But that's all I want you to do for practice. I want you to twist this thing up with lots of bends. And that's gonna be the last new technique on this first section. But before I leave you, I'm going to show you what you already know that you don't know you know. So go ahead and practice this real quick. Okay, here's what you know that you don't know you know. All right, I'm just going to take and do three lock ties in a row. One, Two, three. Three lock times in a row, and you have a basic dog, right? You can make a dachshund dog by just giving it a long body. You could do a tall dog with long legs, all right? Basic dog. But also, a basic dog can become a basic giraffe, all right? This one leaked, his nose leaked, but it's still, you can see how it's a basic giraffe, right? Also, the same exact dog, three lock ties, one, two, three, becomes a rabbit. All right? Then, um, the, the, the circles, right? Using the basic circle, three ball head for a, Poodle, full four ball legs, poodle tail. I'll show you how to do that too. The same circle makes, oh, let me start with this one. Um, remember the hat band I had you make? Remember the hat band I had you make? A variation of that. Oh my goodness, what did I do with it? Is a bumblebee. Bumblebee. All right, now back to the circle. Basic circle, ear tie, ear tie. And you have a mouse. Same basic five ball circle with dog legs and you have a tiger, tiger kitty. Same five ball circle with a different body, but this is a three ball circle to make a triangle instead of balls, there are longer sections. Teddy bear. And that little bendy thing I showed you? A heart. Take the teddy bear, you can hook any animal you've got onto a heart. So with just these techniques, a lock tie, a bend tie, ear tie, and then the bendy things to make the, the balloon change directions. You can make all of these things now with just a little practice. So now I'm gonna show you how to make each one. Here we go. Okay, here's how to make a basic dog. Just the basic, basic. Now, instead of just thinking of twists and ties, I want you to think of body parts and body proportions from now on. The more we think of body parts and proportions, the more we'll be able to design our own animals, right? Um, what does a giraffe have? It has a long neck. What does a bunny rabbit have? It has a long ears, right? It has long ears. So it's kind of like a caricature drawing. You're thinking of the items that stick out, right? So a dog, if I were to make the nose this long on a dog, all right, I'm gonna make the head not much bigger than that. And it's the basic lock tie. Just like that, two bubbles, you've got a dog head. Basic lock tie. Where would, how long would the neck be? I'm gonna say the neck wouldn't be very long, right? Let's make a tall dog. All right, now this is a technique now, if I can't reach up to the distance that I want with this right hand, notice I'm anchoring it in my pinky, then I'll just pinch with this other hand. Pinch here, pinch here, twist. See, I can reach that. 
bend it beside itself, measure the two legs the same, twist it off, and you've got the front legs. How long would the body be? Not very long. I want to make the legs the same size-ish as the dog, as the front legs, right? Basic dog. Now the keys when you're first starting out is whether or not the, the two side sections are the same size. If they're different sizes, like see this one is a tiny bit different, tiny bit different. So um, just practice on trying to get them to be the same size, all right? So that's a basic first balloon dog. Okay, remember earlier when I said about the bend tie that everything is about proportions, right? This is the same dog. Nose. I'm going to make the, the head section small. Still a basic lock tie, right? Small neck, small neck, and short legs. Just like that. Now, if I wanted to make a proportional dachshund, I might make the back legs here. But I'm going to make a crazy dachshund. I'm going to come all the way to the end where the tail is. If I were going to make a proportional dachshund, I wouldn't blow it up as big as this. All right. Here we go. Super dachshund. Da, 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 da. And what I do is I do something like this. When I hand it out. Okay? Super dachshund. Now, I should have mentioned this on the first dog, but I'm going to mention it here. I also put faces on everything. This is what I did for 45 years. Okay? Faces on everything. Because it gives it life. It's worth it. Now, though... Now... I saw a friend of mine, actually just this uh, Christmas, that had a roll of eyes, a roll of eyes. And I'm kind of loving these. Anyway, give it a face every time, every time. Okay, once again, same dog, same dog, different proportions, okay? Small face, little tiny head, whoops, I blew it. Once again, same dog, same exact dog, different proportions. All right, I inflate this one, I'm about four inches left at the end, okay? Small face. Now, the reason it doesn't matter is because I can adjust my proportions to get what I want, no matter how long I make it. I just have to always have extra room at the end, all right? So that's what matters. All right, a little head, same head, same dog, same head. This animal has a long neck. Hmm, I wonder what animal I'm making. Now, what most people don't know is that giraffes have longer front legs than they have back legs. And you see how I just adjusted my size right there? Because the first twist wasn't quite right. Okay. What you've got is you've got a giraffe. Same exact dog. This is the same sculpture as this. But when I add a little extra character to it, and I don't have to add a lot. It's 
spots, just a few spots. Okay. I had a few on the front too. Just because of the video. All right, so now you've got a giraffe, just like that. But it's the same dog, right? One more from the same technique. Okay, one more from the same technique. All right. This one I blow up almost all the way. Three, I'm gonna do a little squeeze here. I don't want any more than three, that's for sure. Um, because I want it to be right at the end. I want the little ball at the end to be right at the end. So I'm gonna make another dog head, but this time, instead of making a short head, now that's the nose, right? I'm gonna make this animal with very long ears, okay? And once again, remember, um, I said this before when I was teaching the bend tie, if you've got the space, push that little ball through that extra time to lock it off. Now that's not gonna come unlocked, okay? Very small neck. Short front legs, still a dog, still a, a Loctite and a Loctite, that's all it is. Body's going to be just the tiniest bit shorter than the legs, just the tiniest bit. And then whatever's left, I divide it in half, right in the middle. And then I'll twist a little tiny ball at the end. So that's why I blow it up all the way, because I want that at the end. So this is the same exact animal as this, right? Except a couple of things I can do. This is the one I was taught, and this is the one I teach. First one, only because it changes everything, right? I'm going to take the front legs and stick them between the back legs. Just like that, so that he's sitting up. Same exact animal with that last little push through. And that's it. Okay. Just for fun, I'm gonna steal, I'll make it a girl bunny. How's that? Because I've got eyes with eyelashes. Okay, now here's the deal. Don't go any further. Whoops. Don't go any further until you make 10 regular dogs, 10 dachshund dogs, 10 giraffes, and 10 bunny rabbits. Don't go any further. Make sure you know every single one of those animals. Maybe make 20 of them. It's worth it. The last thing you want to do is keep going. Learn next, learn the next, learn the next, learn the next. And then as soon as you're in front of somebody trying to make something, they'll say, can you make a bumblebee? You go, yes, I can make a bumblebee because you remember making it. But then you can't remember how to, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do that? Either. No, you want your muscle memory so down pat that you can make this set, dogs, giraffes, bunny rabbits, all of those, boom, without even thinking about it before we move any further. So do all of that before you go to the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna blow your mind, blow your mind. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a different use of what we've already done, okay? I'm gonna make another dog. I'm gonna make a poodle dog, right? This is the one people think of with balloon animals. It's the same as a regular dog in, ter in terms of you start with the nose, go to the head, neck, leg, body, back leg, tail. But by changing it out of the regular lock tie, I'm gonna make the nose, and I try to make all these balls the same size. Instead of making a two ball head, I'm gonna make a three ball head. Just like that. And that's what you get. Neck the same size. And also notice I did not blow it up very far because 
You want lots of tail left. You want the balls to be small. It looks better that way. I'm going to make four balls in a row. Actually, I'm going to make this one kind of a specialty one. Instead of four balls the same size, I'm going to give it legs with little balls at the end. So I made four balls in a row, and I made the two legs a little long, and then the two little puffs at the end of the legs the same size as the head. I could make it all the same size if I didn't have much room here. Body, so leg, two little balls, other leg, lock it off, and this is your basic poodle. Okay? Here's where I'm going to blow your mind. This is the poodle tail technique. Okay, this is the final technique you're going to learn on this tape. I want a little ball of air to come up to here. Now, if I squeeze this like this, it will force this part of the balloon to inflate, this part right here. I want it to go all the way up here. I want it to skip this part. So what I'm going to do is wrap my fingers around it. Wrap my fingers around it. So not so that I'm pinching it off, but so that I'm inhibiting this part from inflating. I do it with my, with my forefinger, with my thumb. I put those around that so that that part doesn't inflate. And then with these fingers, the back fingers, I squeeze the air until it goes to the end. Okay? Let me squeeze it back out of there. So if I'm holding this with my pointer finger and my thumb and my middle finger so that that doesn't inflate, and then with the ends of my hand, I squeeze it together, not letting this inflate. I can make a ball, just like that. Okay? I'm going to mark this one the way I did for 45 years before I started using the little eyeballs. Okay, here we go. Poodle, right? Cute, cute animal. Fast, easy, but it's basically dog head, dog legs, dog back legs, tail. You just add the extra bubbles in it. Three for the head, four for the front legs, four for the back legs. All right? So make 10 or 20 of those. Now, do it. Okay, you ready to move on? So this one's fast. Easy, easy, fast, fast. You already know how to do this. Remember how I showed you to make a hat band? You just make a first twist, a bend. What I'm gonna do is leave about double the size of the, of the head for the tail. And I make basically a hat band, right? Same as I showed you before. All right, big loop, so what do I do? I put the ball through to give it that extra twist, all right? So this is going to be a bumblebee. Base of the bumblebee, body of the bumblebee, stinger of the bumblebee. All I want to do is make two wings. So I'm going to come straight from the top, bring my finger down, and I grab right in the where the balloons are already twisted. So my my pointer finger's on the top. My thumb is where the balloons are already twisted. Squeeze them together, grab everything, pull it out, and twist it around. Remember, pulling out gets rid of, gets rid of the friction. Now all I have to do is adjust it a little bit, and I have a bumblebee. This is one of my favorites because it does go that fast. Started to give it whiskers. Don't think bumblebees have whiskers. Doesn't matter. Oh well, this one does. It's part about the art, right? Bumblebee has whiskers. That's a whisker. All right. The key is the body. Okay. Make ten bumblebees right now. Okay, this next one's kind of a new concept. It's basically a five ball circle, okay? 
nose, and I'm going to go around the face. Cheek, ear, forehead, ear, cheek. Block them off. So it's just a five ball circle. Now notice how small it is. I made this really small. Okay, I did that on purpose. Nose, cheek, ear, forehead, ear, cheek. Cheek should be close to the same size. The ears should be close to the same size. The head should be the same size as the cheek. All right. What I'm going to do now is ear twists here. I'm going to pull that out, twist it around. So in order to pull it out, I have to anchor those two sides with that hand. Pull it out, twist it around. And I'm going to line it up where it's nice and flat. Nice and flat. It's not, uh, you can make it like a kidney, right? But I don't want that. I want it nice and flat. Same on the other side. The other ear. Pull it out, twist it down. All right, you should be able to see what I'm starting to make. This is a mouse, a Mickey Mouse. Okay. Now, the nose, I mean, the, the nose is going to stick out of the neck. And that's not right. You want the nose to stick out of right of the middle here. So what I'm going to do is push it against one cheek. I'm going to pull this out, push it against one cheek, and roll it up into place. So first I pull it out, then I push it against one cheek, and I roll it up in there. And the idea is that it will eventually come right out the middle of the face, just like that. Now, I used to make uh, little legs on the mouse because I can make dog legs because the mouse has legs, right? Um, and what would happen is I was working restaurants, right? And I would hear that way over there, somebody says, look, Martha, look at the little dog. Look at the little dog. So I stopped making the legs. And now I leave it like this. And guess what I hear way over there? Look, Martha, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot I wasn't wearing my hat on this one. Oh, well, uh, look, Martha, it's a mouse. It's a mouse. It's a mouse. So leave it like this. You can also make a loop on your fingers and pull the tail and it becomes a poppy mouse. Just like that. All right. So that five ball circle creates a head for many animals. We're going to do a cat and we're going to do a teddy bear before we move on. How many should you do of these? At least 10, maybe more. Okay, now we're gonna do a kitty cat or a tiger cat. Um, it's the same five ball head, but again, the proportions are different. The proportions are everything, right? So a small nose. A kind of a long dog leg sized cheek, a small ear, long forehead, small ear, long cheek, lock them off. All right, so that's still basically a five ball circle. Small ears, cheek, forehead, it's all the same. Ears match the nose. Now when I twist these off, instead of like on the Mickey Mouse where I tried to line it up straight, I want to try to get an ear look here. I want it to be side so it looks kind of like a kidney. All right, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, very good. Now once again, you're going to wind up with the face down at the bottom of the neck. I mean the nose down at the bottom of the neck. So what I want you to do is pull the nose up into the center of the head. Okay. Now, the body is just like a dog body. Two section legs. And the only difference is that you're going to want um, the tail to be long. And I usually just give it a little bend, just like that. All right. Now, this is one where it's worth the time to give it the face. Actually, they're all worth the time to give it the face, but on this one, okay, just like the giraffe, if I just add stripes, and they don't have to be 
straight stripes, they can be kind of crazy stripes, right? Doesn't matter. All right. What you get is you get a tiger kitty or a tiger cat. Let me turn that to the picture. There we go. How many do you need to make? At least 10. I'd say maybe make 20 of these because we're getting harder. All right. See you at the teddy bear. Okay, this next one's a teddy bear. It's the face is exactly the same as the cat and the mouse in that it's a five ball circle. It's just that the proportions are different. Longer nose, same size as the cheek. So instead of a small nose, longer nose. Small ear, same size forehead, same size ear, same size cheek. So it's very similar to the cat. What did I do with the cat? There we go. Um, it just has a bigger nose. Okay. Twist the ears off. Again, this is how I learned to do the ear tie, right? That's why I call it an ear tie. There we go. And pull the nose up into the face. So you see the difference now? That's got a little nose. It's got a big nose. Okay. So now I'm going to teach you a teddy bear body, which is, again, it blows everybody's minds because it looks like a completely new concept, but it's not. It's really the same concept as the poodle head, all right? But I'm not going to give him a neck. I'm going to give him a long section, hold it beside itself to me. So that would be like dog ears, I mean dog legs. But I'm going to make a third one that same size. So it's like a three ball triangle. It's like the five ball circle, but it's a three ball triangle with longer sections, right? And I lock that into the neck by pulling them apart, twisting them around. So that'll be locked right into where the bottom of the head comes down, okay? Now, this is gonna wind up being a little bit long, but that's okay, I don't mind. Um, I'm going to make another section, the same size, and one more, the same size. All right, actually, because it's going to be a little off, I'm going to make it a little bigger. All right, doesn't matter. And what I do with those two is I'm going to bring them down to one of the bottom corners. All right, and lock off the tail around that, and that becomes the the teddy bear's tail. So the way it works is it looks like he's sitting down, right? Straighten his leg out a little bit, straighten his head out a little bit. And what he looks like is, is like he's sitting down. Body, arm, arm, leg, leg, tail. Bum, ba, da, da. Teddy bear. But the triangular body freaks people out because it's like a whole big thing. So it's not though. It's three ball triangle. And then a two ball triangle is connected down to one of the bottom corners. So it doesn't matter which corner. So with practice, I was paying attention to teaching you and not really paying attention to my, um, my proportions. With practice, you can get all of these equal, okay? And it starts with the very first one. You wanna kind of measure that very first one. If I'd have made this very first one a little bit bigger, then all of them would have been better and the tail would have been shorter. Again, it's like a bunny rabbit where you want the tail right at the end. But you get the idea. So practice a bunch of these, a bunch of these, till you get this down. Okay, here's the final balloon of this intro section. Okay, um, it's going to be a heart, a heart. So I have to run out of red balloons because I've been doing so many of these balloon videos. So I'm using the pink one that I made the uh, dachshund out of earlier. <laughs> all right. But what you want to do is blow it up almost all the way. Right. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you're just going to tie it in a circle. Okay. So that's the face that I had put on the dachshund. Uh, but don't worry about that. Let's try to make that where it isn't seen. All right. 
What you did was just make a circle and I tied the end without putting bubbles to lock it. I just tied the two ends together. So now what I'm gonna do is bring this middle down. And you wanna bring it down where it's even. If it's sticking out, it'll, it'll end up looking like that. It has to be even, all right? And now I'm gonna do that pinch twist where we change directions, where we made the lightning bolt, just like that. Now that does it. I don't really even need to do anything else. But if I wanna make the pinch here, if I wanna make the heart a little more bendy, I can give it a little pinch, a couple little pinches, and I'll get it a little bit, see how it's actually kind of square now, but that's okay. Nobody's gonna care that it's, you know, I mean, they're gonna think it's a heart. It is a heart. The reason I wanted to show you this is you can add this to any one of your sculptures. All right. Any one of your sculptures. And all of a sudden, boom, you've got a two balloon sculpture that's crazy good. And this is your first lesson. All right. So practice making a bunch of hearts and then attach them to all the animals you have laying around. Attach the heart to the dog, attach the heart to the giraffe, attach the heart to the, to the poodle, um, and you will have crazy balloon animals. All right? So the next section, I'm going to teach you some more complicated things. But again, those complicated things are just going to open up a few more things that you can make. It's all about proportions and these few techniques. Have fun.